I just found my new favorite search tool for static sites. It's called PageFind. Now this thing is an incredibly robust API. Not only does it support fuzzy searching out of the box and string match, but it's also incredibly fast due to its being built in Rust, but it also breaks out your search index into different chunks and just loads exactly what individual users need depending on their search. Now it actually gives you a default UI by default, which is amazing. It includes the images, it includes actual marked text so you can see exactly what your string search matched. But on top of that, it's customizable. So you can add your own colors, you can change the weight ranking of certain sections. You can actually show, hey, only index these individual components on my site and it will only do that. Now, PageFind is done by the folks at Cloud Cannon, and while they have sponsored a video in the past, they're not sponsoring this one. They don't even know I'm making it, but I'm super impressed with this. The API is incredibly robust. There's filtering, there's multi-language support out of the box, and it really is about two minutes to get it set up on any site. In this video, in just a couple of minutes, we're gonna get this up and running with an Astro site from scratch, and then I'll show you how to customize it by changing around what's indexed, the certain weightings that we add, and then even add some custom UI as well. There are a couple of tricks when it comes to dev mode, and so I wanna show you those as well. That will make it way easier for you to actually develop the UI in particular if you want to. And the API itself is incredibly robust. This is the kind of tool that's just a delight to work in, and so I'm really excited to share this with you. Now, if you stick around to the very end, I'll show you a blog post that will walk you through a lot of this content in a more compressed format, but I hope it'll at least get you started by watching this video. You ready? Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Just so you can follow along, I'm going to start from scratch. We'll go very quickly through just setting up the project, and then we'll kind of slow down when we get to the page find stuff. So let me go ahead and get, create a new Astro project just called page find first look. And I'm going to go ahead and use the blog template just so we have some data to actually query. Let's install the dependencies, and then I'll go ahead and use TypeScript. You don't have to, though. We're not going to be really writing anything, and we'll use strict. Git repository is just fine, and then I'm going to go ahead and open this up in VS Code. All right, I've got this up and running. I just ran npm run dev in here. And so let's go ahead and open this up at local host 4321. There we go. Okay, so here's what we've got right here. And this is what we're going to want to query. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, this is ridiculously easy to get started with. And you can just follow along with a quick start guide. Just a note here that they basically opt for using the mpx commands, which will run the binaries directly. I'm gonna go ahead and just install it on the project and that way you've got access to it yourself and you can just npm install this if you wanna play around with the finished code. So all you have to do for that is come down here and do npm i, then we'll use a dev dependency like this and it's just called page find. All right, so we should be set to go there. Let's get this back up and running. Now, as I mentioned, it comes with its own UI and that includes both CSS and JavaScript. And then it will basically dump everything inside of this div with the ID of search. It's actually using Svelte behind the scenes, it looks like. But what we're gonna do is just come over here. Let's go into our pages directory. We'll look at our index page, which is our home page. I'll close this down. And then what we're gonna do is add everything down here kind of at the bottom of this section. So let's come up top. And first of all, I'm gonna add all of this and we'll just add it to the head of the document. So maybe let's come in here to the base head. And the way this project is set up, every page should share this head. So I can just drop this in anywhere. And right now it's going to be looking for this, which will not be present. This page find right here, forward slash page find means it's looking in the public directory, which it does not exist yet there. Same thing here for the JavaScript. Now the trouble is when we try to build, it's not gonna be able to build this because it's gonna be looking for it. And when it's not there, it's gonna basically throw an error. So what we need to do is actually add an is inline attribute to this, is inline. And that way Astro will essentially ignore it and not try to modulize it. It'll just add it directly like this to the head of the document. And eventually this will point to whatever we build out to. So I'll show you that here in a second. Let's go ahead and close that down though. And then come over here and we're gonna add all of this to the bottom of the page. So let's come down this way and just add it in right here. Now, you'll notice that TypeScript is giving me an error here. So what's happening here is it's looking for this class of page find UI, and when it's trying to instantiate it, it can't find it. And that's because, again, it's in the head of the document. So you can fix this in a couple of ways. For right now, I'm just gonna say though, TS ignore, and that way we don't have to deal with the error right here. All right, so in dev, it's going to break. Here you can see it's trying to find the page file UI. It's not finding it. Again, that's because it's not yet built. Now, you'll need to first build your site and then you run a script to create the search index. So if I come back over this way, you'll see that you'll have to index your site and they're using MPX here, but you can basically just cut all this stuff off and all you have to do is add page find site public or wherever your in directory is. In our case, it will be the dist folder because that's how Astro builds. So probably the quickest way to do this is to come to your package.json. What I'm gonna do is just add some extra stuff to this build script. So I'll come in here and add in, on top of this here, page find, we'll do site 
And the final folder that it's going to build to is a folder called disk, because that's what Aster does by default. Now, with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and close this down, and we'll do npm run build. And what it should do is do the Aster check, then it will do Aster build, and finally, it will do page find site dist. All right, just finished, and notice that not only did it build everything, but then it came inside here, and it tells us what it's doing with page find. So page find starts right here, and first of all, it's looking at the source, which is that dist folder, and it's going to output it at dist slash page find. Now, it doesn't find any specific attributes that tell it what to index, so it's going to index everything inside of the body tag. We'll come back to that in a second. It auto-detects your languages, so here it finds that I'm using only English, and then it goes ahead and it builds this search index. Now, it's really cool what it's actually doing behind the scenes. If I come into my dist folder here and come into page find, let's expand this a little bit, you'll notice that all these things are broken up into fragments. So there are little sections here, and then this index basically tells it what it needs to load. Now, it's actually using WASM here because the entire thing is built in Rust. It's really cool how they're doing all this. It's smart in what it loads, and that way it's as quick as possible for your end users. Now, in Astro here, you can preview the dist folder by just typing npm run preview, and there's a dev script that will just run Astro preview at the exact same port, but it's going to run it off of your dist folder right here, which means this is our final build. So if I come down here, you'll see that I've got this search automatically. Now, what this means is I can just literally start typing. So like blog post, and it will actually return results for me based on everything in my entire site. Now notice it's not just that the blog, it's actually anywhere on my entire site because remember we didn't include that data attribute that I talked about earlier. Now it's going to search for everything inside of the body and it's found it. It's even highlighted a couple of things as well. So really cool. And this is a spot for an image in case you had something like that. So with that little bit of work, it's already up and running. Now let's talk about a couple of different things. First of all, I wanna come down in here and I guess we can close out this preview server and let's close the sidebar as well. And I mentioned that you can actually tell it what to index. In fact, if I come over here to the page find docs, underneath indexing, you can configure the index in a couple of different important ways. First of all, if you add data page find body to any element, it will index only that and basically ignore everything else on the site. You can have multiples of these throughout your site. So for instance, the way that this project is set up, if I come over to blog and to this slug right here, and then looks at this blog post layout and wraps everything inside of that. So that tells me if I come over here and I just want my blog post index, but nothing else, all I have to do is come inside here and maybe right here, we can just add that data page find body and it will only index the stuff in my actual blog articles. Now you can also ignore things as well. And there's another attribute for that, this data page find ignore. So in other words, something perhaps inside of a data page find body attribute that I want to now ignore, I can do that with this attribute. So I'll just add this to the image in case we don't want the image indexed. By default, it does index the image and the alt as well. So we'll actually use those in its search index, but we can ignore it just like that. Now, there are a couple of other items here. Like for instance, you can say, hey, by default, I want you to ignore everything inside of here versus basically it will use certain meta tags. Instead, I'll leave you to figure that out. And I've done a blog post on all of those that I'll mention here at the end of the video. Now you can also add different HTML attributes to the index itself. There's actually a smarter way to do this as well, where you can actually give it a page find YAML file and say, hey, every image or every header tag or every H1 on my site, I want you to go ahead and index. And that way you don't have to add these attributes individually all throughout. In this case though, since I have a wrapper, it makes sense to just add it on the main of the blog post itself. So that's the first way to customize this indexing. The second way to configure the index is by weighting different content. So if I jump in here, you can see that by default, H1s are ranked at seven, all the way down to every other element down to one. So it does this ranking automatically, but you can actually add your own with this data page find weight two. Now these weightings are ranked using a quadratic scale. So like a ranking of two will have like four times the impact of a standard text. So it moves up pretty significantly as you add different rankings to this. So let's say I came in here and I said, hey, for this title here, I want everything inside of here to be a data page find weight of let's say like six or something ridiculously high. So this will come back way more than a normal paragraph on my blog. So those are the two quick ways to customize what is actually configured in the index, whether it's what's included or the weighting of those items included. Next, I wanna focus on customizing the UI. Though so remember this page find index command is run after we run our build command. So what I can do is just pull this page find over to my public directory. I'll go ahead and move it there, which means technically it will be built with this, right? So it'll actually be built with this original data. Now you might say, well, that's a problem because it's gonna use this public directory. Well, you're right, it'll actually move it over to the dist folder when it builds the site. However, because the page find command runs afterwards, it'll then replace that folder with the new data as it does that it's indexing. So basically in dev mode, we'll have access to the last page find data. 
Now, because I don't want to write that each time I do anything and move it over myself, I'm just going to come to this package.json and we'll add one more thing on the end of this. So after it's gone ahead and added that page find to the dist folder, so it's done its new indexing, let's go ahead and add one more thing and that would just be a copy command. We'll add this recursively here and then we'll grab the dist page find folder and we're going to copy it over to our public directory. So in other words, each time we build our site, it will first do the aster check, then it will build it, then it will index our site and copy that file over to the public directory, which essentially will help us in dev mode to actually be able to use it directly without having to manually copy that folder over. All right, so now we've actually got it workable essentially in dev mode. So let's go ahead and run this one more time, npm run build. And just like that, now it should be available to me in dev mode. So I'm gonna come in here, npm run dev and get this back up and running. So just to double check that it did what we expected, it should have copied over the, the folder here, page find from up here, dist right here. So it's done that and it'll do that each time, replacing that for us each individual time. So that way we always kind of have the last builds data to work with. And that way we can actually interact with this ourselves when we're in dev mode. So just to make sure it's working, if I come in here and search for like MDX or something like this, I should get uh, callbacks to different blog posts that mention that. Now I mentioned that I've done a blog post on this, and I'll go ahead and just show it right here. You can follow along with a lot of the stuff we've already done by looking through this blog post. What I want to do, though, is look at the different options now for customizing the existing UI. Now, you can build your own UI from scratch, but they do such a good job that I think, for me, I'm just going to stick with this and customize some of the HTML and CSS. So, well, the CSS and what it, what it actually returns. So let's come over down here. And here you can see it's already passed in a couple things, the element and the show sub results true. You may have seen that kind of indented text a second ago when we searched, but there are a bunch of other options as well. So for instance, I can say show images, and I've done this little chart just to make it easier to see, but the default is true, but I could say I don't want it to show images, and then it will not show images when it returns its search results. You can see I've got other options like excerpt length, process term. What this does is it's a function that runs before it performs a search. So in other words, if you wanna actually like alter your text before you actually run it through the search term, you're welcome to do that. Process result then runs on the returned result and maybe processes that differently. So if you wanna like convert some text to another text, they show some examples in the docs where you might wanna take a character and convert it so that it processes and looks better in your search results. Now, by default, it actually will show empty filters, but you can remove that and say, hey, don't show me anything if there's nothing here. And again, there's other options here like using your own CSS reset or theirs. And then if for some reason you need to change the bundle path, essentially if you're getting an error, you can manually type that bundle path yourself if you want to. You can set a debounce custom default if you want to. It does it for 300 milliseconds. In other words, when somebody stops typing, it will wait 300 milliseconds before it runs that search, just so it's not distracting as they're trying to search. You can change that up or, or lower depending on what you want. And then finally, you can actually hand it a list of custom translations for the returned auto-translated strings, or you can let it kind of do its normal thing. And again, I'll leave you to that if you've got multiple different languages on your site. But here's one example right here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this to show a bunch of different options. So here I am grabbing this element of search, which is right here. It's going to dump all the UI directly inside of here. I've changed the debounce. I've reset my style, set this to false. Show empty filters, set that to false. Extra length is only going to be 15. I'm not showing images, but I am going to show sub results. So that's an example of what you could do. So let's come back over here and I'm in dev mode here. Now you can see that some of that reset styling is not there. It should also not include a space for the images. So I could say false or I don't know, something like that. You can see that now I got this nasty button <laughs> outline over here and uh, no images yet, but that's probably because I didn't include something that it could include. Okay, so you see there's no space for an image over this way. Uh, what's a blog title that we could grab with an image? So like Markdown Style Guide. So let's come in here, Markdown, and you get Markdown Style Guide. Now, if I remove this show images false here and come in here, now you'll see that I'm actually getting the image. And again, this would be the default. This 15 extra length might be a little bit short, so again, I can remove that, add that back inside of here, and that looks about the exact same, so not a super big change there. Let me come back up here to my blog post. Here I'm pointing to other API options like multilingual search or filtering or sorting, all that can be done as well. Now there is another way that you can actually customize the CSS, which I don't think I show in the blog post. But let's come back over this way and just test out their own page find search here. So we could say like uh, CSS custom properties or something like that, and you can see using the default UI and you can customize the styles right here. So I'll click inside here and you see you get access to all of these um, CSS custom properties. Now, depending on how your CSS is set up, in other words, if it's using a dark light mode toggle using a class name like dot dark, so tail end, for instance, you can go ahead and change it around like this as well. But I could come in here and grab all of this and I'm sure I have some kind of global CSS file. Yeah, right here. 
and let's just add this. I guess we'll just do it on the root itself. And we can change around some stuff, like maybe let's change the border width to like four pixels that the UI border width. Yeah, that should work. Border radius to, I don't know, 16, something like that, just to see some changes. Maybe we alter this as well. I'm not sure which what this does here. And let's change this UI text just to make sure it's super clear we've actually changed something uh, like that. Okay, so now I'll come back over this way. And you can see I've already got the color showing here. And I can type for like uh, markdown. Wasn't that one of the ones we found? Markdown. And it should show results right there. So you can see it's kind of nasty, but we are customizing it here. Now we did remove the the reset that it has. So we may want to add that back in. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this customization. And now we get some of the kind of original styling here that's a little bit nicer to look at. But you can still see that our global CSS styles are being carried over here. Overall, I'm just super impressed with this page find. Like I mentioned, it's by Cloud Cannon, which I've done a video on before that they sponsored, but this is not sponsored, uh, like I mentioned. You can see here, though, that there's just lots and lots to do. So filtering, sorting, multilingual support, references. But the cool thing is that all this is out of the box as fast as possible. It's super quick on your users. They only have to download exactly what they need. And hopefully with these couple little items that I've shown you, like moving that page find directory over to the public directory just so you can use it in dev mode will be helpful for you as you get started. Well, I hope this was a big help. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.